developed uh, jhanas and using his jhanas he developed uh, uh, supernatural powers during the time he uh, he he had uh, attained jhanas he thought his uh, all defilements are gone to make it even worse he was able to uh, perform various uh, uh, supernatural feats and therefore he thought he was enlightened the confusion is that he without overcoming delusion ignorance uh, you cannot attain full enlightenment attaining jhanas does not uh, overcome or destroy all your del delusions uh, ignorance uh, even hindrances are not uh, hindrances are not completely eradicated uh, let alone fetters so until the uh, overcome fetters uh, your hindrances uh, also will uh, will come back again and again so he was in such a confused state that he has he thought that he has certain full enlightenment now what he has done is suppressed his hindrances he even has not touched his uh, defilement uh, the fetters these are two categories of defilements so he is uh, his, his student has uh, overcome hindrances and overcome fetters and attain enlightenment therefore he was able to see that the teacher had not attained full enlightenment <coughs> confusion can arise at any stage of jhan Okay. Any other question? Uh, well, here's an interesting question. <clears throat> Looks like uh, this question pertains to the Abhidhamma. Some people say that Abhidhamma was not taught by the Buddha. It, it would be great if Bhante could kindly let us know what your views are about this. Do you? think knowledge of Abhidhamma can be useful for understanding and practicing the Dhamma? Well, uh, Abhidhamma uh, may be helpful to do the analytical study of various aspects of Dhamma. Whether the Buddha taught Abhidhamma or not is uh, still uh, controversial. Uh, Abhidhamma scholars believe that when the Buddha was in Tosita heaven uh, teaching Abhidhamma to his uh, mother who was born there and uh, came down every day uh, to human world and after his uh, meals in human world he taught Abhidhamma to Venerable Sariputta and he kept it uh, uh, and he, he, he memorized it and he taught Abhidhamma to his disciples and his disciples uh, brought it down uh, by, by, by orally. Orally they brought it down <coughs> to uh, present day. Uh, this is the tradition they believe. This is just a belief but there is no evidence in any text to uh, substantiate this uh, belief. <clears throat> However, Venerable Sahariputta had a very powerful analytical mind and also he was known for his wisdom. And there are some evidence in certain discourses like Mahachattari uh, Sutta and in Divinikaya uh, Anupanda Sutta and so forth. And there are various uh, uh, places where uh, Dhamma is more, uh, much deeply uh, explained by him. And uh, for this reason, people believe that uh, Abhidhamma Buddha taught and uh, Venerable Sariputta continued through his disciples. 
uh, <clears throat> and also, however, if somebody learns Abhidhamma for their own knowledge to analyze Dhamma and so forth, that's good. But to attain enlightenment, the knowledge of Abhidhamma is not necessary. What you need to learn to overcome are your fetters. Uh, hindrances you subside by, by attaining jhanas and fetters you overcome by attaining uh, arahantud. Uh, this is what is necessary and uh, in order to have their very deep nitty gritty details uh, one may use Abhidhamma uh, for analytical purpose. Okay. Bhante, what is the best way to realize non-self? <laughs> I, I, I answer this question every day. Every day. I don't mind answering it anytime, anytime you ask me. I repeat the same answer until you get uh, the point across. I get the point across. Uh, to see uh, no self, you must see impermanence. Impermanence is the key to realize no self. Impermanence is not something you can learn from somebody. That is something you experience within yourself without any partiality, any personal opinions, impersonally or rather objectively you must look at your own experiences then you will see uh, that there is no self everything is in a state of flux changing 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 <clears throat> okay any other question Does anyone have any other questions? Monday, it's Nisanka. I uh, listened to this uh, just now about no self. I have heard yes. uh, some teachers telling that uh, once you look at um, internal, I'm not sure whether I'm getting it right, but when you look at uh, phenomena internal, like seeing and perception internally uh, and externally, you could say there are two different things and in the middle, then there is the balance, which is uh, externally something outside, internally something within, and in between, you can sometimes get an idea of that there is no owner to the scene, external and internal. Um, does that mean anything to you? Yes, that is true. Uh, uh, there is a statement that Rattapal, Venerable Rattapal said uh, that is the, the summary of what you said uh, is that there is no overlordship of anything in our life. That is very true. And this is the fact that the Buddha emphasized in uh, Anatta Lakkana Sutta there he said that since he asked a series of questions, uh, when uh, all the forms, past, present, future, internal, external, high or low, gross or subtle, uh, far or near, since they all are subject to change, uh, is it proper to think this is mine, this is myself, this is, uh, this is mine, this is myself, this I am. Etang mama, eso mama, eso me atta. 
this is myself. Is it proper when you see everything from past, present, future, internal, action, Rosso, subtle, and so forth, if everything is impermanent, unsatisfactory, is it proper for you to think that there is a self? This is the, the pattern he used in uh, Anatta Lakkana Sutta. So, uh, also he said, if there is a self, that self should be able to control our, uh, our, our lives. Like uh, when there is an affliction, the self should be able to uh, stop being afflicted. Uh, or this in the corona situation, if there is self, self should be able to completely destroy the uh, corona virus from our body. Since there is no such thing, uh, you cannot destroy corona virus. Therefore, there is no anything in us, any power uh, for our life to uh, go in where we like. For instance, we fall sick, we get, uh, we, we grow old. If the so that you be able to stop us from getting old. I like very much if I have that because I am getting old. So, uh, since there is no overlordship or anything to control anything, that is another way of looking at no self. <coughs> Shall we meditate? Okay. Okay, now we uh, don't have time, any more time for questions. Let us do our meditation. <clears throat> May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, Without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will, should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother who risk her own life to protect her only child, but even so, towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred, resentment. Whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever away, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here. Not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision. Removing desires for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. With this very wholesome thought in mind, wishing all beings to be well, happy and peaceful, let us begin to focus our mind on the breathing to start this. Notice inhaling as inhaling, exhaling as exhaling. The pause between inhaling and exhaling. And then it repeats no, again and again and again. As we do so, we feel the breath, we perceive the breath, we have attention to the breath, and we are conscious of the breath. They too change as the breath changes, feeling changes, perception changes, volitional formations, so attention 
attending attention, thought changes, consciousness changes. As they change constantly without using a word, simply be aware of these changes. You can never find anything, any iota, any atom, any molecule, anything, no matter how hard you analyze your body, feeling, perception, and so on, you can never find any permanent thing. And this is very important. And then all your hindrances will temporarily subside, greed, anger, restlessness and worry, and sleepiness and drowsiness and doubt. They all subside, not completely destroyed, but subside temporarily. They will not be active when you are mindful and then you gain concentration with the feeling of uh, letting go, the feeling of uh, metta, feeling of compassion and then arise when these states arise, joy naturally arises and then comes you again you experience a degree of happiness, which is much subtler, very calming, soothing mental state, not agitation and excitement, like ordinary joy or happiness. This is the joy and happiness leading to concentration. Therefore, it always is very tranquilling peaceful, leading to concentration. Even the concentration may not be very deep, but it is very, very essential for our practice. Since this is short period, you may not have a deeper awareness of all these things, and yet whatever this short period you experience, you know they all change. With this awareness, understanding, pay attention to your breathing, feeling, perception, attention and consciousness. Dukkha pata chene dukkha Bhaya pata chene bhaya Soka pata chene soka Hantu sabbe pipani no May the suffering be free from suffering May the fear struck be free from fear May the grieving be free from grief, so too may all living beings. May rain come in time, may country be prosperous, may rulers be righteous, and may they all have wish them to lead nations and may they all have peace, happiness, 
solace and comfort. May all those who are suffering from this COVID-19 especially be free from such agonizing, painful sickness. May all those who are helping them in many ways, doctors, nurses, other medical people helping them in many different ways. Those who work very hard to come up with the vaccine, may they be able to find it very quickly and help all these people, millions of them and may they all return to their normal, regular lives and live long in very good health. Now, friends, we can start the second round of questions, uh, if you have any. Bhante, the Anapana Sati Sutta takes you through all the states of jhanas. How many jhanas are there and at what stage in the 16 steps of the Anapana Sutta does one eradicate the fetters to reach enlightenment? To answer uh, jhanas, there are four called material jhanas and then four immaterial states attainments. They all people call jhanas, but last four are not termed as jhanas. They are called states, ayatanas or faculties. Anyway, anapanasati uh, when you develop a mindfulness of breathing, second tetrad, the tetrad beginning with feeling, the statement is Piti Sats Patisangvedi Asasi Saniti Sikriti Piti Patisangvedi that is experiencing joy, one inhale, experiencing joy, one exhale, and then happiness, and then uh, knowing entire uh, feeling and tranquil feeling one uh, breathe in and breathe out. These are the four stages and eight uh, little uh, separate individual parts. Now, uh, since the word joy is mentioned, uh, some people interpret as, uh, because joy is a fact of uh, jhana, they, therefore they think at that stage, they attain dhyanas. But if you read the discourse very carefully, please read the sutta very carefully. You can see from the first tetrad, you can attain seven factors of enlightenment, one of which is samadhi sambhajanda. Samadhi invariably explained in terms of four jhanas. When you practice the second tetrad, you attain, you gain seven factors of enlightenment. When you practice the third tetrad, you gain the seven factors of enlightenment. When you practice the fourth tetrad, you gain seven factors of enlightenment. Now, do you need one set of second uh, factors of enlightenment and another set of factors of enlightenment, another set of 
four times. You don't need four times. One should attain factors of enlightenment at one time. That is enough for you to develop your un uh, understanding or realize for noble truth and attain liberation. So, why are there four? Uh, four times Buddha mentioned attaining seven factors of enlightenment. These four uh, is, uh, tetra are mentioned for individuals, temperaments, and personality. Some individual gain these factors of enlightenment from the first tetra, some can gain from the second, some can get from the third, and some can gain for the, from the fourth. And therefore, uh, you have to understand it and practice, and then you will see even one of the seven, four tetrads uh, you can attain uh, factors of enlightenment, one of which is Samadhi Sambhujanga. Samadhi, four times it is mentioned, Sati four times, Dhammaja four times, Piti four, Virya four times, uh, Piti four times, Tranquility four times, Samadhi four times, Equanimity four times. That does not mean you have to attain the same thing four times. <laughs> Once you attain one time, that is enough. The four, I repeat, mention four tetrads, 16 steps uh, for individuals to practice and then they will choose whatever fit their personality. Thank you, Bhante. Yeah. Bhante, I can relate to this question in my own confusion. Um, uh, one person asks, I've heard the fourth aggregate described as mental formations, volition, and attention at different times. Will you please explain and clarify what is included in the fourth aggregate? Ah, uh, volitional uh, formations or attention or uh, what is I used? Uh, so volitional formations, this person also wrote mental formations yeah. and attention. Mental formation, volitional formation, attentions, all belong into the volitional or sankhara. Sankhara. I uh, use different terms, but mean the same thing, sankhara. I try to avoid Pali terms because most people do not understand Pali. Otherwise, in Pali, rupa, vedana, sanya, sankhara, vinyana. Rupa is physical, Vedana is sensation, uh, Sanya is perception, Sankar is volitional formation, so any thought, we, attention is a thought, mental uh, attention is thought, uh, volitional formation is thought. So this, all these terms I use at different times, because they all are synonymous. Uh, so I hope you, you will understand the, uh, understand why I use them. And uh, remember that they all are synonymous. We say the intention is volitional. With the will, we intend. And uh, uh, attention is, we, we pay attention with the will. Whatever is happening with the will is volitional formations. And of course, Sankara has a very wide 
meaning uh, but for this particular purpose we stick with one of them <coughs> thank you Bhante you're welcome there's a very good question from my friend Flora in Washington DC the Buddha says we make the world with our thoughts how much of our current world is made by our thoughts would you say world should be made without thought no that the world is made up of our thoughts world is made up of this okay what uh, does that what does that mean that really mean what is world according to the buddha said arya se vinaye loka world is loka loka is i ear nose tongue body and mind and form uh sound smell taste touch and mental uh, um, objects these are the world one i am i am one world you are another world if there are 100 people in this they are 100 worlds world means that uh, each and every one of us is a world uh, there are several suttas, uh, Rohita Sutta, for instance. Uh, he went to, he asked the Buddha whether he could see the end of the world by traveling. Buddha said, no, you cannot go to the end of the world by traveling. But without knowing, without understanding the world, you cannot End, of, end your suffering. Uh, then Buddha clarified the meaning. By walking, you cannot come to the end. Come to end to the end of the world. By without coming to the end of the world, you cannot uh, uh, overcome suffering. Meaning, without fully understanding, realizing this body, five aggregates and six senses, six sensory objects, without understanding these things properly, you cannot come to the end of the world and cannot end your suffering. So the, the world he referred is this body and mind with its consciousness. And uh, uh, ending that is, uh, not having thought. Thought means karma. If you have karma, you will have a body, mind, and consciousness, and so forth. If there is no karma, you will not have it. What he meant there, the world without thought means work without karma. Because thought are karma. Buddha said in one place, Chetanaham Bhikkhave Kammang Vadami, because I call thought karma, and it is this thought also called volitional formation, sankara. As I mentioned in my instructions, uh, sometimes I call uh, in, uh, volitional formation, sometimes thought and so forth. They all refer to karma. So whatever intentionally we do is a karma. And Buddha said, it is wonderful, it is good for us to have uh, the, uh, to end the world without a thought or without uh, thought, uh, there's no world. That means when we attain full enlightenment, there is no come for us to uh, continue our suffering. Uh, so that is what it really means. Thank you, Pand. You are welcome. And uh, another question? Uh, Pante in the Parinibbana Sutta, the Buddha goes through all jhanas back and forth and finally passes away at fourth jhana. Mm -hmm. Could I? Uh, please ask why. I think uh, I also uh, 
have read this. Now, it is in the fourth jhana, he can, uh, he, he, he returned to the last material jhana, highest material jhana. When he passed away high, highest material jhana, he can feel that he is passing away and uh, peacefully. In other higher jhanas, he doesn't have any uh, feeling. Uh, and in this jhana, he has a feeling and he can uh, be very mindful in the uh, fourth jhana. Uh, upeka sati. Upeka means equanimity, sati means mindfulness. It's called Upeka Sati Pari Suddin Chatutta Jana Upasamji Virati. In the, in the fourth jhana, the equanimity and the mindfulness are pure rest. And this pure rest, equanimity and mindfulness can be known only in the fourth jhana. And therefore, with that jhana, with equanimity, with mindfulness, he was able to pass away. That is my interpretation. I have not seen it anywhere, but this is what I think. He come, came to the fourth jhana to pass away. Okay. Right. Now, friends, we have to wind down this uh, session. And uh, I want once again to wish for all these suffering beings, including all of you and all of us, be free from suffering and uh, be free from fear and be free from feeling insecurity and return to normal, healthy life and live long in good health. With this, we want to wind it down and continue your practice and see you this evening. Thank you.